In this short video, I'm going to talk about fluid properties. Fluid properties are physical characteristics that help us to describe the behavior of fluids, gases, and liquids. So I'm going to start with the first um, property that I want to talk about, and that's density. So we show density using the Greek letter rho. And here's how we define density. Density is mass per unit volume. So if I, if I want to write it mathematically, it would be mass per unit volume. And this is how, this is the symbol that I use for volume. So we are not mixing it up with velocity. So I use V for velocity. And this symbol for volume. So mass per unit volume. Now if I want to write the units of this, in SI, the unit for mass is kilograms, and units for volume is cubic meters. And in, or in US customary system of units, if I want to write that, the units for mass would be slug, and the units for volume would be cubic feet. All right, so this is how we define density, and this is uh, one of the most important fluid properties. And it tells you how dense something is, your fluid is. For example, let me tell you the density of water, so rho of water at uh, 4 degrees Celsius is equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meters. This means that one cubic feet of water has the mass of 1,000 kilograms. Sometimes it's difficult to visualize how big one cubic meters is. So I have this photo over here for you. So you can take a look at it. And this is one cubic feet. So if I fill up this box with um, water, it's gonna, uh, the mass of this box is gonna be 1,000 kilograms. Now, the denser the material in the box, the heavier it's gonna be. Let me tell you this example. So if you have density of mercury, Hg, and that is 13,500 kilogram per cubic meters. This means that if I fill up this box with mercury, the same box, the same one uh, cubic meter box with mercury, uh, the mass of that is going to be 13,500 kilograms, which is um, more than 13 times higher than what the density of water was, okay? Another thing that I want you to pay attention is that temperature plays an important role when it comes to these physical properties. For example, as I showed you over here, the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius is 1,000 kilograms uh, per cubic meter. However, if I want to write the density of water at um, 20 degrees Celsius, then this number is going to be reduced to 998 um, kilograms per cubic meters. So as the temperature rises, the volume increases as well. And as the volume increases, the mass doesn't change. As the volume increases, density decreases. So there is a relationship between temperature and density of different fluids as well. Okay, another fluid property that I want to talk about is called specific weight. Specific weight is shown by the symbol that we use is gamma. And the definition for that is weight per unit volume. So the mathematical equation for that would be weight would be W divided by unit volume is volume over here. Now, if I ask you what would be the units of specific weight, you would tell me that in SI, the units for weight would be Newton divided by units of volume is cubic meters. And in US customary system of units, um, the units for weight would be pound force. And the unit for volume is cubic feet. I get a lot of questions that, what does word specific mean over here? Why is it called specific weight? So in fluid mechanics, whenever you have a word specific, that means per unit. 
Okay, now take a look at these two equations. They are similar, right? This is mass divided by volume. This is um, weight divided by volume. And we all know that there is a relationship between, between mass and uh, weight. So weight is equal to mass times g. Now, this tells me that I can relate these two to each other. What does that mean? Let me write this equation again right over here. So gamma, instead of W, I'm going to write M times G. M times G divided by volume. Now, if I want to write this a little bit better, I can tell that this portion that I'm going over, this is exactly the definition of density, right? So this is density. In other words, I can write gamma to be equal to density times g. Perfect. So now we know that specific weights and um, density are related. So if I have the density, multiply that by g, um, acceleration due to gravity, what I get is specific weight. So at 4 degrees Celsius, because the density of water is 1,000 kilograms divided by um, meters cubed, if I want to calculate gamma at 4 degrees Celsius for water, this would be 1,000 times G 9.81. And this gives me the value of 9. There we go. And the unit for that is. And this is the value of specific weight of water at 4 degrees Celsius. And the last fluid property that I want to define for you is specific gravity. Specific gravity, or SG, is the symbol that we use for it. It's very simple. So you can have specific gravity of any fluid or any object. So this is specific weight of any fluid that I want to, divided by specific fluid of water at 4 degrees Celsius. And this will give me specific gravity. So I know that um, gamma is related to density, so I can write this in terms of density as well. Density or rho of any fluid divided by density of water at 4 degrees Celsius will give me specific gravity. So specific gravity is important, is specifically important to figure out if things are going to float on top of water or if they're going to sink. For example, let me show you what happens if specific gravity is less than one. So let's say that we have specific gravity of an object that is less than one. This means that um, gamma of that particular matter divided by gamma of water is less than one. And this means that gamma of water, specific weight of water, is larger than gamma of that object. So essentially, water is heavier than that thing that we have. So sometimes when you put a piece of wood on top of water, you can see that it's floating on top of water, or styrofoam, or oil. That's because that specific material, oil, is less dense than water, so it sits on top of water. Similarly, wood is less dense than water, and because of that, it sits on top of water or styrofoam. Now, what if specific gravity is larger than one? So similarly, well, we have gamma divided by gamma of W is larger than one. So then we have gamma of water is less than gamma of that object. This means that water is not as heavy as that material. If you put a brick on top of water, is it going to sit on top of water? No, it's going to sink down, right? That's because that brick is heavier, more dense than water. That's why it goes uh, down. Similarly, a piece of concrete, if you put a piece of concrete, it will sink. If you put a piece of steel, it will sink um, underwater, right? All right, now let's talk about an example. We have a swimming pool. And this swimming pool is 4 meters wide and 9 meters long. This is an aerial view of the swimming pool. So when the temperature of water is 5 degrees Celsius, 
the depth of water in the swimming pool is 3.03. Now, what we're going to find is what is the depth of water when the temperature, temperature of water is 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, something that you need to pay attention to is that you can easily solve this problem uh, by understanding the principles of density. So I know that I can find the value of density of water at um, 5 degrees Celsius using my textbook, right? This is already posted. So density is equal to mass of water divided by volume. So if I ask you what happens to the volume of water when we, when we increase the temperature, you're going to tell me that when we increase the temperature, the volume of water is going to go higher. It's going to increase. How about mass, though? The mass of water does not change. Let's assume that there is no evaporation. There is no leaking to the bottom of the pool. If that's true, if there is no evaporation and if there is no a leakage, mass doesn't change, okay? So I can calculate the mass and then write the same equation for this temperature. So again, I can, using the textbook, I can calculate density of water at uh, 35 degrees Celsius. I can find it uh, using the tables in the textbook. And then mass can come from this equation over here. And then volume is something that I want to find for uh, this scenario when temperature is 35 degrees. All right, let's take, uh, let's actually talk about that. I've already looked at the textbook and I know that uh, density of water at five degrees Celsius is 1000 kilogram divided by um, meters cubed. And the mass, something that I want to find. How about volume? Volume is depth times length times width, right? So I know that the depth is 3.03 uh, .03 times 4 times 9. That's the volume of this uh, swimming pool that I have. What would be the units for that? The units for that would be meters cubed, right? Okay, so the only thing that I do not have in this equation is m. So I will be able to find the value of m, or mass, by multiplying this value into 1,000. And the value is kilograms. All right, so this is the mass of water. And again, because there is no evaporation, there is no leakage, the mass of water is going to remain constant. Okay, so now again, I will go to your textbook, or I will use a table like this that you can find um, online to find density of water at 35 degrees Celsius and density of water at 35 degrees Celsius would be 994 kilogram divided by meters cubed. Okay, this should be equal to mass is the same thing and volume. I know that the width and the length of this swimming pool is not going to change. So four meters times nine meters. The only thing that is going to change because of the expansion due to, due to temperature change is going to be the depth or D. Okay, the only unknown variable in this equation is D. So what I can do is to find the value of the depth to be approximately 3.05 meters. Okay, so now from this, you can see whenever temperature is increased by 30 degrees Celsius, the depth of water in that swimming pool is also increased. Look at these two numbers. Compare these two numbers. The depth of water is also increased in the swimming pool. All right, this was example number one. Let's go over one more example to make things crystal clear. All right, let's talk about this last example. Um, we have a truck that is carrying oil. We do have the volume of oil that this truck is carrying. Also, we have the specific gravity of oil. What we are going to find out is the weight of the oil in the truck. And the weight we know that is W of oil. If I ask you what equation that I told you in this video, 
has the term weight in it, you're going to tell me specific weight. So essentially, specific weight or gamma of oil is equal to weight of the oil, W of O oil, divided by volume of oil. We do have the value of the volume, right? So if I want to calculate W of oil or weight of the oil, I just need to multiply the volume of oil, which I have, by specific weight of oil. The problem is that I do not have the specific weight of the oil. However, I do have the specific gravity of the oil. And I know that specific gravity for oil is going to be gamma of oil divided by gamma of water, right? Okay, so this is going to help me to find that. Um, so gamma of oil, I'm going to write just sub O instead of oil, is going to be specific gravity of um, oil times gamma of water. This value is 0.94. And gamma, or specific weight of water, uh, remember that we are using the U.S. Um, customary system of units. So um, gamma of water for U.S. System, customary system of unit would be 62.4. And the units for this is pound force divided by cubic feet. All right, and SG is obviously dimensionless. So this gives me the number of 58.65. And the unit, again, it's going to be pound force divided by cubic feet. All right. So now I do have gamma of, I do have this value and I do have this value. I can calculate weight of oil in this truck. So the volume is given to me over there times 58.65. And eventually, this number is going to be, this is your answer. Okay, so now you can see how these different properties of fluids can be helpful when we are calculating different variables um, in a fluid. In this example, we just calculated the weight of oil in this oil tank here. All right, this was the last example, and this wraps up the topic of fluid properties. Stay tuned to learn more about fluid mechanics.